Welcome, welcome to the Cheat Code. I'm yours truly, DJ Mike Marvelous. I'm so excited we get to put this intro to DJing course one together. Today, you're going to go through lesson one. We're going to have a lot of great discussions in the, in the chat. I'm excited. It'll be about 10, maybe more videos uh, for each for this course. So this course is the intro to DJing. So if you're new to DJing or if you're just a novice and you're trying to bone up some skills or maybe it's some things that you didn't know um, about DJing, this is the channel for you. You want to follow this series. You want to follow this because this is going to give you some cheat codes to become a better DJ and to get out in the industry and be doing big gigs. So the first First, first intro is some basics of DJing, and then we'll talk a little bit about the equipment that you need to be a DJ. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of Cheat Code. Again, this is the, the first series of this intro to DJing. Um, lesson one um, we're going to get a little bit into the gear talk a little bit about that but before we get into that it's very important if you truly truly want to be a good dj the only way to do it is to practice right so before we start going into what you need and how to do it you must practice in the beginning it it's not going to sound right but you got to struggle through push through and eventually you will get it one night it'll just click and you'll be able to beat match like no other. You'll be able to scratch, but you got to practice. You got to practice. Okay, so with that being said, let's get a little bit <clears throat> into what you need in order to be a DJ, right? And this is probably the important part for my parents out there or for kids that's asking for gear. Um, you can have a couple of different setups, right? So um, let's, let's get into the setups, right? To my right, I have here um, what's called a DJ controller, right? So this is a DDJ SX2, a little bit older model, um, but this has everything. It has two decks, it has your mixer all built in, one controller, one big device will control everything or will have everything you need in order to DJ along with the software. So we'll get into that. So you need at least a controller, to control your music. This controls uh, the MP3 files that you'll have on your computer or the streaming files that you have on your computer to be able to either speed up or slow down the song to match other songs. And that's what you do on both decks. Usually both decks, the left deck and the right, the ones and the twos are identical um, with what they have going on. And then in the middle, you'll have what's, what's known as your mixer. And I'll show you a little bit over here in your turntables. Um, but this is a four channel mixer. It also has a microphone input. It's a booth output, but we'll get into all of the specifics, um, that are on some DJ controllers. If you're just starting out, you probably won't get a four or need a four channel mixer. Two channels will will do quite fine. I can tell you I probably don't even use all four channels. I use one of them as a mic channel and then maybe three at the most at a time. Unless you're mixing EDM, um, EDM DJs, you may uh, need four, <clears throat> depending on what you're mis mixing. All right, so this is your DJ controller. So you need to find a DJ controller. If you Google that or, or go on Amazon, Amazon that, you'll find a bunch of them. We'll talk about what you need to look for in a DJ controller, okay? This setup here is two turntables, a mixer, but I have needles also known as stylus. You can use those or the new wave is to get what we call the phase. And let me see if I can grab one of them here. So this is the phase. What it does is it controls your record, it talks to your computer, tells your computer where on the song, how many spins, it acts as the actual record so you don't need the needle. It allows you to, you know, bump the table and nothing will skip. This is another device that you can add but you don't necessarily need it. That's the phase that goes along with the turntables. But anyhow, you need either two turntables. I've seen people do it with one. So again, if you just wanted to start out and you wanted to start with the vinyl, um, you want to have at least one, right? At least one turntable at minimum. It can be done with one. You just got to do a little bit more, but you should get two. <laughs> you should get two. So two turntables, 
doesn't necessarily have to be techniques. I have them slanted, also known as battle mode, because I like to scratch, and it moves the tone arm out of the way. So this is battle mode. If you had them turned the correct way, um, that's just your regular mode. Um, some people like to DJ like that. I keep mine in what's called battle mode, and that's just turntables turned sideways. You also will have to purchase an additional mixer. You want that mixer, if you plan on using software and a computer, you have to make sure that is compatible with whatever software you're going to use, such as Serato, uh, Rekordbox, uh, iDJ, whatever you're going to use, you want to make sure that mixer is compatible. This mixer here is the DJM S5. Pretty cool mixer. It's a two-channel mixer. I use it for a lot of my cuts, do a lot of videos on, on social media. Um, I have taken this out on gigs a couple times, but I got to carry a lot of this stuff. I have cases for this. The controller is in its, it's in a case. So you do want to protect your gear if you're traveling or if you're a mobile DJ, you want to make sure your gear is protected. But if you're just at home, that the case can wait. I do have cases, but I've taken them out of the case because I rarely take these out. These things are heavy. Okay, so two turntables, a mixer, possible stylus, or you can just go with the phase and you can purchase the phase as well. Okay, so that's another set of gear. But as I said with the controller, this mixer is built in to the controller. So this part is this part, is the center of the controller. Each deck represents each turntable, right? So that's two different setups, your controller setup, your turntable setup. There's also CDJs. So again, more so for my EDM DJs, but I know some hip hop DJs use them. A lot of clubs have the CDJs. That would be similar to this setup. You would have CDJs, which play a CD player in a sense, it looks like an independent, just this single part of the controller, and that would sit alone. You would need two of those, and I'll show you a picture of the CDJs here. But along with the CDJs, you will also need a mixer. So you'll have to buy a mixer separately to go along with those CDJs, okay? So that's three different setups. You got your DJ controller, you have your turntables and mixer, you have your CDJs and mixer, or if you really are really starting out, this would be a controller at a very minimal level, right? Very small, I carry this as a backup, as a backup controller. This is the DJ to go to. You can actually scratch on this thing, believe it or not, but you can actually mix, right? It looks like a little toy, but you can mix on this. If you're just practicing blends, if you're just starting out, you wanna know, if this is you know, something for you, or it's a younger child that's coming into the DJ game, you don't wanna spend a whole lot of money on just, to, just for them to you know, blow it and not, not touch the gear, start them with this. They can do well with the DJ to go Two, There's another version of this, but this is Serato compatible. You can put this, hook this up to your computer and you can start mixing the day. There's nothing wrong with this, especially to start off. Um, for my training DJs, I usually start them off with this, just so they can kind of get used to what blending is. Once you get your blends down, then you can start to move on to the other stuff. But that's CDJ to go. I'll put the link in the bio along with the other, other items here. So now you know at least what you need to start mixing. We're almost there. You will need a laptop. In today's age, um, not a lot of people are mixing just straight vinyl anymore. Um, the, the game, the DJ game, has moved into a laptop kind of game with software such as Serato, Rekordbox, um, Tractor. There's a, there's a number of different pieces of software that you can utilize in order to DJ, um, but you're going to need a laptop to do that. And the laptop should be functional. <laughs> and I say that if it's freezing up a lot, if it's got a virus on it, that's probably not the laptop you want to go gigging on, right? Everybody says MacBook. You don't necessarily need a MacBook. You can definitely DJ on Windows. Um, Alienware, I've heard people do on um, gaming computers and things of that nature. But you want a laptop um, to, to be able to hold music and then run the software um, to be able to do your mixing. Um, I named a few pieces of software. We'll get into those. Um, I have an external hard drive. Not a lot of people um, use external. If you have a huge uh, hard drive inside internally in your computer, um, they're coming with like two terabytes, three terabytes in your computer. You can just save it right on your hard drive internally. A lot of people do that. Um, I'm, I guess, old school in a sense. A lot of DJs still use the external hard drive. 
um, where they hold their music. If you're downloading music, you can do where do you get the music? We'll talk a little bit about that. There, there are record pools that you can, you can become part of, you can pay for and get music that way. There are streaming services that can link to that software as well. So you can hook up to the streaming services and pull down music and mix those how you see fit, right? So your laptop, external drive, possibly you may or may not need it. So another thing you'll need is a speaker. If you're gonna be mixing at home, um, you're gonna need a speaker, probably not this big. This is a PR15, um, pretty large speaker. Generally, I'm carrying these out for gigs, um, but you can get a smaller speaker, something just enough to play music and for you to listen to, for you to be able to hear music while you make your mixtapes and things like that, or while you practice, you're gonna need some kind of speaker or speakers um, in, in, in the area. Monitor speakers are okay. Um, but it depends on you know how loud you want it and the quality of music you want to hear. So you will need a speaker. Chords. <laughs> I don't think DJs talk about this enough. You will need chords, right? There's multiple different kinds of chords. There's XLRs, there's quarters, also known as TRS. It depends how deep you want to go. Many, many DJs call them quarters. Um, TRS is a specific kind of quarter. There are different quarters, so I do know that. Um, so you have your XLRs. You do need cords to hook this stuff up. Um, most of the time, you'll come, like your mixer, for example, will come with a USB cord to plug into your computer. It'll also come with a power cord sometimes. Um, your laptop will come with a power cord. Your controller will come with a, a power cord and a USB cord to, to hook up to your computer. But how do you hook things up to your speaker, right? You have to purchase speaker wire, XLR, or quarter inch um, to hook up to your speakers. These aren't your, your, your daddy's speakers. Um, <laughs> so this old, old time speaker wire is just not going to cut it. This is the female end of an XLR. So XLR has three prongs. I like them the best. To me, the quality is better um, on an XLR. You get less hum. Um, generally when, you, when you're hooking um, equipment up with the XLRs because it has that third ground. The quarter sometimes gives you a bit of a hum. Um, some of them don't, um, depending on how much you're spending on your, on your cords. Um, you may also need a surge protector. You got a lot of gear, you want to protect that gear. Um, you want to get a surge protector in order to protect that gear in case you have like a power outage or something like that because if you're running a huge speaker and all this gear is going to be pulling pulling some wattage and depending on your electrical I tend not to have problems with uh, with things shortening out sometimes I leave my stuff running overnight if if there's a storm and their power blows um, you want that surge protector because this stuff ain't cheap and you'll see once you start clicking around how much this stuff actually costs um, I'd rather not go into it on the video um, because <laughs> prices change, but I can tell you this is an expensive hobby. So if it's something that you want to do, or you have somebody that really wants to do it, um, just make sure uh, that's what they truly, truly want to do. Okay. All right. So let's get into how to hook up the equipment, what to look for when buying a controller, um, what to look for in a mixer, and what to look for in a speaker as well. Okay. So now we are behind um, my DJ controller. Again, this is a DDJ SX2. This uh, controller is made by Pioneer. Um, it's specifically for Serato. Um, so it's hooked up so you can DJ right with Serato right away. But I wanted to get to the back because that's, it's, it's truly important when you're looking for a controller. Now, if you're just looking to play kind of in the house, um, you'll have some stuff. But this is important, right? Your master output is truly, truly what you want to see, right? So you see the master output one, which is on the left, that output takes XLR. So R means right, so that's to the right, and L means left, of course, right? So you have your channels, your left and right, um, XLRs, the, that is where your speakers, your main speakers will get connected, and those are the XLR cords that I talked about. Um, you'll need to purchase those um, separately. This is the, the controllers, Rarely, I've never seen them come with XLR cables, all right? So that's your first master output. We also have um, what I call the red and whites or the RCA cables. As you see the master out two, I have a right and a left RCA cable that can go out. Um, that is generally on the same line as your master output one. 
So you could hook up um, some some speakers in the house um, through RCA um, speakers. Now, your your cheaper controllers do not come with the XLR master output one. They don't come with them. Generally, they're going to either come with the master output two or what you see here in the booth, which is the TRS cable or what I call the quarter inch cable. So if you're hooking up equipment and you're getting s the, the cheaper controllers, and I'll, uh, cheaper meaning less expensive, I'll say that, the less expensive controllers do not come with the XLR master output. The, least, the less expensive controllers only come with RCA or TRS or quarter length, or quarter inch cabling for your outputs. What this means is, if you are looking to use that least expensive controller out in the public with a larger speaker, you will have to buy an additional mixer to connect the sound to go from RCA to XLR. Now let me slow down a bit. If you're only mixing in the house and your input to your speakers are also RCA, or it could be quarters, you can buy cables that go RCA to TRS. On one end, it's TRS or quarter inch, and on the other end, it's RCA. You can use those, right? But most cases, if you're looking to hook huge speakers up to and you want to use XLR to do that, you're going to have to buy an additional mixer, and I'll show that in the video. To connect your controller to your speaker, you'll have to go RCA to the mixer or to the mixing booth and then the mixing booth to the speaker. Now most people do this especially with microphones because you have more control over the sound of, of the speakers, of the, of the microphone and the sound of the music. So a lot of people do this especially if you're getting huge, huge um, speakers and you're setting up for a big venue, you're going to want to go on the mixing board anyway. But most cases, you can go right out of your controller if you have XLR right into your speakers. All right, let's move on. You have your booth out. This is a booth speaker. So booth meaning the DJ booth. And if you want it to have only for you to hear what's going on, you can, change, you can plug in some quarter lengths in here and have your own sound and control for your booth out. So these are your masters. Both of these master outputs, one and two, are on the same line. So if I turn the knob, it's not this knob, but I'll, I'll act like it. If I turn the knob, that would control both master output. If I turn another knob, that would control your booth output, okay? Not necessarily those, those particular knobs, but that's how that works. So you would have your own volume for your booth. You would have a separate, or could have, a separate speaker near you that you could hear if you had to put speakers elsewhere um, for the event, okay? Next, you have your channel line. So I'll try and back this up a little bit. So you got channel one and channel two, and then you got channel three and channel four. So as you can see, I have four channels here. We'll start with this side. So channel one, it has phono or line. Phono is if you wanted to hook up a turntable to this controller. I could use this controller and my turntables all at the same time if I wanted to. Or I could use a line. So that line is typically used for maybe you have an iPad where you, you're just going to play music from. You're not going to mix it. You're just playing something. Or a phone. Maybe you have a song and you can't get it off the phone. The only way to play it is through the phone. That would be your line. But you would need an RCA to whatever input uh, feed your phone, your cable, your your iPad, whatever you're using to play that music, that phone or that line um, would go into the RCA. As you can see, there's a CD line, so I can hook up CDJs to this as well. So again, RCA cabling. Your mic cable here, so I can use my channel three, and typically I do. I can use it for my microphone one, so I can plug one microphone up um, to my channel three. This is a combo jack. So this takes either quarters or XLRs, and I believe it takes something else. What is the name of it? I want to say DVS, but I don't think that's the name of it. If somebody knows it, um, put, it in, put it in the comments. I, uh, I'm drawing a blank. 
Yeah, drawing a blank on what the third one is. But this will take three different cables, XLRs, quarters, and then there's another one that it'll, that will take. So it's a combo jack. So you can plug a microphone up into there. If we go to the other side, you'll see something very similar, right? You have your phone online for your channel two. You have your CD, so you can hook up another CDJ here. And then you have your mic two or your TRS, and this side only takes quarters. So where this one is a combo jack on your channel three, your channel four only has the quarter, okay? Then I have my power, my USB, and my power cable, okay? That is, that's, that's the gist of it, right? So if you're buying the least expensive controller, you may just be missing that master out. So that master output may not be there, and you won't have all these channels. You'll probably just have a couple of channels, probably two channels, channel one and channel two, and that'll probably just say line, phono, or CD, all on, all on channel one or channel two. And you have to decide whether you're gonna use it as a virtual controller, which you're DJing with virtual music, or if you're hooking up a CDJ, or if you're hooking up a turntable, you can do it all. You can do it all on the controller. So that is the controller hookup. Let's move on to the turntable mixer combo. Okay, okay, so a lot of cords and cables here, right? Let me see if I can zoom in just a little bit. There we go. Okay, so this is the DJM S5 mixer um, made by Pioneer DJ. Um, I guess I like Pioneer, but I do, I'm not gonna lie. Um, Serato, this is Serato driven. Here, just similar to the DDJ, uh, SX2, you have a master one, which takes XLR cables. You have a booth, or I could use it as a master two. Then I have a channel one, a channel two. I have an aux line that I could use aux on. And then I have my mic line that I could use my mic. That's it. That's all I got. I mean, you have two USBs. One of those USBs powers the mixer. I don't necessarily need them both, but I run one to a uh, surge protector and I run the other to the computer. Your computer can power this mixer. I just like to have that dedicated power to itself so I'm not drawing off of the, the laptop's power. But that's all I have for outputs. What's this little thing here? That is the ground for the turntables. So the turntables run off of sound waves and if it's not grounded, um, you get a hum and that could um, mess up your mixing. So we'll get in a little bit of that when we talk about the stylus, um, but that's your ground. You probably saw it as well on the DDJSX too. It was a little round kind of button, but those are the ground wires for your turntables. Okay, so now we're on the back of the speaker. The speaker that I have is a PV, is the brand, PV, PR15P. 15 is the size of the subwoofer. So 15 inch subwoofer, on this speaker, this is a pretty big speaker, but I've had these speakers for years. These things are tanks. It is a preamped speaker. So this speaker, each of these speakers that I have, have amplifiers already built into them. If it did not, so that's a, there's passive and there's preamped speakers. Passive, you're gonna need to purchase an amplifier, a separate amp, to power the speakers. These speakers come already powered. You got a power cord you hook up to it and I can turn them on and they're pre-powered and I don't have to worry about an additional amplifier. So if you get a passive speaker, it's pretty much just the speaker, the, the subwoofer and the tweeter and no guts inside. That's, that's about it. There's probably a little board in there and then you have to purchase an amplifier so you can power the speaker. Anyhow, here is the connection for this particular speaker. So you have your XLR cables on that left-hand side for your inputs. So you would go from the mixer or the controller directly into the speaker. You have a volume for that line. I could utilize a microphone as a or a line in as well. But I have a dedicated channel for XLRs. Then I have two separate quarters, quarter-inch jacks that it takes for, for power as well. Um, again, power's already baked into it, already has a built in, that's this, this gate that you're seeing there, um, that's the amp, um, but it's already connected um, inside of the speaker. So I could hook up the TRS, so the quarter inch cables to two and three. They have, each of them have their own volume. 
So the fatter one is three, the thinner one is two, and this is one, channel one has quarter length. So I can hook up up to three items up to this one speaker, maybe a, a, a direct microphone or what have you, um, right into this speaker, okay? So this is, again, this is the PR15P PVs, pretty, uh, a pretty old model. Um, they have some newer models of speakers that may come with some different, uh, some different uh, outputs or inputs, excuse me, mixer inputs. Um, some speakers come with an output. So what I could do is daisy chain my speakers together. I don't have to go to the board. So if I had this speaker and another speaker that I wanted to hook up to it, I could go in from the mixer and then go out into another speaker and then that speaker would carry on the sound. This one does not necessarily have an output to it. These are all inputs that we would be putting in directly from the speaker. But you will need a speaker that you can play music. Again, this is a preamp speaker. If you do not have a preamp and you're, you're purchasing passive speakers, then you're going to need an amplifier to power those speakers. Okay, so now I've explained to you what you need as far as gear is con concerned what you need in order to DJ. Again, I went through your DJ controller, your DJ mixer, I talked about turntables, I talked about CDJs. This would be considered as a controller. Um, you would hook it up to your computer directly. It does have a few outputs. It has a headphone jack. Oh, I forgot about that. You'll need some headphones, okay? You'll need some headphones to be able to cue up songs and things of that nature, so you will also need headphones. If you want to start emceeing, you'll need a microphone. If you want to talk on your mixes or start working on your MC skills, you will need a microphone. Um, think about that. You probably won't need it in the beginning, but at minimum, you'll need controller, turntables or a mixer, headphones, speaker, XLR or TRS cabling, and you may want to pick yourself up a surge protector Got to get yourself a laptop, got to get yourself an external drive or a laptop that has a huge drive. Again, this is very basics intro to DJing. If you have any questions on anything that I've just said or my DJs, if I misspoke on any part of that, please add to the bottom. Listen, we're trying to get people, we're trying to pass the torch, trying to get other DJs involved trying to get them to be able to be a good DJ, but a lot of times people just don't know how to get started. So I'm trying to help out and, and, and teach those with these lessons about how to get started. We'll get into mixing in, in out, up and coming videos, but at least with this video, you know what you need in order to get started. Once those things are purchased, by that time, I'd say by delivery time, the next video will probably be out. Um, and we'll start talking a little bit about queuing up and cueing music and mixing and blends and things like that. So again, very first video of, uh, of a series. This is the intro to DJing, right? Course one, lesson one, marvelous DJs, cheat code, cheat code, cheat code. I didn't say what the cheat code was for this video. The cheat code for this video was the DJ to go. That's your cheat code. If you wanna start small, you wanna start slow, here's your cheat code buy you one of these. If you're an adult, you got your own money, you got some adult money, buy you one of these, right? If you love hip hop and you love DJing and you wanna get to the roots of DJing, buy you two of these, okay? <laughs> but just because you have turntables, somebody has a mixer, it's not about the type of gear that you got. It's the creativity in the person. That's what makes a good DJ. The music that you play, the things that you do differently that the other DJ does not. And that's a cheat code. Yours truly, DJ Mike Marvelous. Thanks for checking out Course One, Lesson One, Intro to DJing. Can't wait to lesson two. The cheat code. Yours truly, DJ Mike Marvelous.